Salut les Rangers, aujourd'hui nous sommes en direct du Comic Con de Bruxelles. C'est pas compliqué, ça va être une journée de dingue. Rencontre avec JDF. Regardez bien ce qui suit. A plus. Comic Con Brussels. On a count of three. One, two, three. Comic Con Brussels. That's your line. Okay? Alright, watch my number. Here we go. Turbo, Black Dino Thunder, 
and then I did the superpower beatdowns, um, and then uh, the new character from the uh, Boom comic, Lord Draken, which is a mix between, uh, uh, yeah, good, the green and the white, and he's evil. I'm trying to go live, but... Uh, oh, I well, I, I can tell whilst you're getting that up if you need to. What I loved about that, then, is not only do you obviously know in which Power Rangers you were, one man just said, yep, yep, and so sort of ticked them off as you went. That's brilliant. Are you a fan, sir? What a surprise, what a surprise. Oh, he's, yeah. There you go. I mean, we, we will let you ask a question afterwards if you're a fan. Um, I mean, that kind of summarizes what I was going to say. I mean, the Power Rangers is huge, and it's been going and going and going for, what, 20 odd years? 20, 25 years. 25 years. It's crazy. You were there, obviously, from pretty much the start. Obviously, you came in green a bit later, which is Rita's invention, is uh, it? Yeah, only 10 or 15 uh, episodes into it. But so. you are Gen 1, essentially. Um, how have you found it as it's grown and as it's obviously become bigger and budgets got bigger and stuff like that? Yeah, well, as you can see, you've got the little kids now that are dressed as Power Rangers, but they're mom and dad, you know, uh, used to watch Power Rangers, and then their mom used to have to watch, you know, Power Rangers, so it's, uh, it's exciting, you know, it's a good thing. Did you, um, because I, I obviously you, Joe, martial arts, um, was that your in, or were you, did you go in because of an acting background, how did you get that well specifically? I was a national rated competitor, so it was, uh, you know, going out there and doing martial arts, then when I got uh, Power Rangers, it just was perfect. It was a uh, mix between karate and a little bit of acting and all that good stuff. So, I'm trying to see Francis, where are you? Can you go live on my Instagram, please? Thanks. I, I can't get any service here. Just go live on my Facebook. We're going live, guys. That's, uh, that's uh, tech for us. Once you go live, let me know so I can have it, okay? <laughs> Professionally, he knows what's going on. <laughs> oh, there's one man already going live for you. You're going to have about 16 channels in a second. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, um, in terms of obviously um, the history of Power Rangers, do you have any attachment to any one generation, or has it been different? And, and you have a different love for each one as you go. You know, we did the Superpower beat down on Bat the Sun, and uh, those fights were pretty epic. We did the Green Ranger versus Ryu, White Ranger versus Scorpion, uh, and then now with the Boom Comics, we have Lord Draken. So I'm really, uh, I'm into certain characters. You know, I really like. Uh, a variety of Power Rangers. My first, of course, was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, there's over a hundred and something Power Rangers, though. So I'm gonna have to go live right now. Are we live right now? All right, let me see that, Francis, real quick. Thanks for going live. Are we on uh, Facebook or Facebook? All right, we're on Facebook Live. Say what's up, everybody. There we go. Facebook Live. Facebook Live. All right. Well. Uh, I like to keep everyone updated, so if you're not here right now, we are in Brussels, uh, Belgium, where the chocolate, I know you're going to say chocolate and beer, but I don't drink, so I'm going to say chocolate and the waffles and the french fries? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, Freeze. welcome, guys, and uh, we're going to keep this on for a little bit. Do you guys have some questions? Oh, yeah. Do you want me to get straight into the questions for you now? No, no, no. You, you can ask certain things. I, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll happily have a chat with you. I just know these guys. I mean... I, I don't think I've ever, ever seen so many different types of Power Rangers come to a Q and A yet, so this is exciting for me. But I mean, exactly what you're saying. Like, I, I was um, at the right age when it was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and like, I don't think I'd seen anything like it because I came from living films like the Godzilla films and all the stuff from Japan like that. Yeah. And then Power Rangers came along, and it also had all those elements, but so much more, and for kids. Like, did you know the impact it was going to have? When, when you got signed on to it? Uh, you know, it was one of those things where everybody said it wasn't going to be a big hit. You know, everyone said this is going nowhere. I was a, a young actor at the time, and I just loved working. So it was one of those things where I believed in, because karate, the colors, the monsters, there was nothing like this in, in, uh, in the United States. And then I learned that it came from Japan. I learned that Japan, you know, this is, this is 30, more 30 years than that, 40, something like that, 50, I don't know. Uh, and then I, then I learned that it was a Japan show, so I thought it was pretty smart. And I believed in it, but now the kids are growing up, and you're all able to come to Comic-Cons, you don't have to 
really listen to your mom and dad, you should, but you can't say, you know, mom can't say, turn that off. It's too violent, it's this and that. It wasn't, it, it wasn't a violent show, it was educating people in karate. And if you're not educated in karate, then it might look violent to you. So we educated a lot of kids around the world. We get a picture of, uh, we get a picture of this awesome kid that's holding up a Power Ranger toy right there. Look at that. You are being seen around the world. Right now. There we go. Another one right there. We had all the Power Rangers earlier in here. Got a little red Power Ranger right over there. That's what's up. All right. Um, anyway, so uh, you know, it was a Japanese show, and, and it was exciting. It's more, it's more um, rewarding now to you know uh, see everyone's stories and hear people's stories. And uh, it's just, I, I'm traveling around the world because I think it's important. I was in the uh, you know, Philippines and Jakarta and the UK, uh, Mexico City, I got Dubai, Chile, all these different places because I feel it's so important to thank fans from around the world, not just the US. And uh, Power Rangers is everywhere around the whole entire world, so I really like to go to different countries and thank the people that's made the show. Sometimes in the US, we get so stuck in the U.S. that we don't travel outside the states because it's hard. It's, you know, it's, it takes you know long flights and all that. But I, I enjoy it, and that's what I think being an international superstar is: is to travel around the world and thank everybody from around the world because Power Rangers are super popular here. Uh, I've had so much love and people in mind, and it's just a, I've never been here before, so I got a chance to walk around and. And uh, it's, it's refreshing to see some place like this, you know? Yeah, I mean, like you're saying, exactly. Uh, I, I know of these guys a little bit when you guys know. Yeah, I mean, you're part of so many people's childhood here that, like, there's a little part of their personality that comes from what you guys did in the show. And that's, like I say, with the kids now, they get the same thing. Yeah. It just goes and goes. But it feels good to step off an airplane in a different country and have so much love. And that's what I really, I, I like hearing the stories. I really like uh, making people smile. And no matter how tired I am or what, I always try to give it my best so you guys don't see that, you know, because you guys are here to see your superhero. So I want to make sure I stay super to be your hero. Does that make sense? Oh, that's cool, man. I think they, they very much appreciate that. Um, like you're saying, though, with it being around the world, but coming from Japan, is, is it now that the American Power Rangers is the Power Rangers? Because didn't Japan have their own originally? Yeah, uh, Japan had their, Japan had their, they had their own, and then Japan is super popular. So I don't know if we're that popular in Japan. You know, because Japan has their own Sentai Rangers, they have their own Power Rangers. So I traveled around the world, and I went to Japan, and it wasn't like, oh, Power Rangers, they have their own. You know, so that's like the only place, uh, you know, in the world where they actually have their own Power Rangers. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. But people love the Japanese version. You know, if you're a fan of the Power Rangers, you get to watch, you, you get to watch the Japanese footage and the shows as well as the American footage. I was, this is a question I was going to ask, because this is something a friend told me, and I thought I'd finally find out this is true. Um, in the early series, was it that you had the monsters and the, the fights, the people in the suits, and then you guys acted around those bits, or was it that you guys did everything again? Uh, no, no. What we did is we took, um, we took... Are you guys watching my Facebook Live? <laughs> oh, you are? Uh, you're waving and it's a bit of a delay, so sorry. I think, that, I think the, the, the new generation, they, they're yeah. easier on screens over there than they are six feet this way. Yeah. <laughs> Is this Facebook or Instagram? Facebook. Facebook. Gotcha. Um, so what happened is they they intercut in the show. So they they used the Japanese footage and then added the American footage, the American actors. But the Green Ranger, we we ran out of footage, so we actually I actually jumped in the helmet and did fight scenes and did the Dark Dimension. So we had to kind of you know uh, we ran out of it. So I ended up doing a lot of that. Which was American. We call American footage, Japanese footage. So I had to shoot a lot of American footage for the Green Ranger. That's cool. Uh, and again, because you've been there, so so from like you've been, and then in other iterations. How did it change over the years? Because so, obviously the, um, the the CGI started coming in and all the rest of it. Was the process much different, or was it? Uh, 
Let me give this to Francis. Take this, and we're still on. We're still on face. Um, it's you know, I don't know if the graphics ever <laughs> ever change that much. Um, that's what I like about Power Rangers is that you, you know it's Power Rangers when you see the graphics. The graphics change when you did the movie. The first Power Ranger movie, we updated the suits. The suits were extremely heavy, about 50 pounds of the suits, so it was very hard to kick. Back then, we didn't have the cool cosplayers that make really awesome suits. Uh, Anarchy makes some really nice suits, uh, all Power Ranger suits, so he's, uh, he's pretty, pretty accurate on that. So it was the, the super heavy uh, suits, the graphics changed, but I think overall, through the whole 25 years the series has been on, the monsters are kind of looking the same, I think, you know? Some of the fights and things like that. The first seasons, we used to fight a lot, uh, the out, out of suit. And then eventually, they don't do that much anymore. Just because of the process of filming, it takes a long time. So uh, they don't really do the fights, they just fight in suit. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, yeah. very interesting. Um, in that, obviously, because you all had martial arts backgrounds. Was that a case of then you guys sort of had to figure out with each other, or did you have choreographers from the start, or? Oh, I was always there. I got a chance to do my own stuff. I was the first one to show up on set. If you wonder why Tommy fought a lot, I was the first one on set. I was the one that said, I'll do it. I'll stay late. Let me kick. Let me do this move. I'll do a wire gag. I'll front flip and hit the concrete, no problem. So I was the first one to always do that. And the director loved it because when you can do all that stuff, it's easier to shoot. Um, so I had a lot of fun, but I was the first one to kind of show up and, and train. I trained when I was four in martial arts. I trained my whole entire life. So when I got the show, I was a third degree black belt at the time. Now I'm 44 and I just received my eighth degree black belt, which was a, yeah, which is pretty, pretty, uh, thank you. Yeah, big accomplishment. Took a very long time. 40 years in the martial arts, you know? um, and, But it's also, that rank is also judged on, you know, sharing your knowledge. Like Chuck Norris, for example. He's got schools, he shares his knowledge, and that's what makes you, that's what you become a great master by sharing knowledge to other people. You get to see your students grow and become an awesome black belt, and that's the reason why I respect uh, Chuck Norris so, so much. Um, is because he had schools and he's legitimate. He, it, it, he's a 10th and then he's the 8th degree like me. So I'm so excited. I'm doing a show with him uh, coming up in Lexington. Uh, I've met him three other times. Actually, I skydived. Um, so I was skydiving when Chuck Norris did his tandem. And then I thought of the joke like, Chuck Norris is so cool, he doesn't need a parachute. But <laughs> he actually did need a parachute. <laughs> So I'm excited to see it. Oh man, I, I, I think everyone in here thought I would have loved to see that skydive. That would have been incredible. Interesting, obviously, because you obviously love martial arts and, and that was part of what got you into the role. But you said you started when you were four. What was it that sort of influenced you to start? Because obviously a lot of kids now will start because of things like Power Rangers. But well, that's what it was. It's, you know, no matter, no matter, I think, who you are, karate's mainstream. You'll always stop and you'll look and you'll watch. And you go, wow, that's cool. So as a kid, I was walking by a karate studio, and I saw this older lady, which she's a lot younger than I am now, but I was only four, so I thought she was an old lady. She's probably 20. Anyway, um, doing a kata, doing a routine, and I thought that's something that I'd like to get involved in. As a kid, you know, I, I suffered a lot with certain things, ADD, and, and it was, I was really off a little bit. So martial arts centered me. You know, so I, I studied in school. I was able to stay in karate class and learn. I've taught so many people with disabilities that became black belts. I've, te I've taught people with autism. I've taught people that, that couldn't function in the world that there are great black belts. Because what karate does is it centers your mind and it makes you focus. People were blown away. So when I moved to karate, I was thinking, man, this is great for my ADD. Like, train, train, train. And then when I started training other people, that people said, no, we can't train them, we can't train them. A kid came in a wheelchair, my brother, my brother played my brother on the show, David Truhart, but he passed away a while ago. But when the kid came in in a, in a wheelchair, he said, can you teach me? And I was like, no, my brother said, I can teach him. So he picked him out of his chair, put him against the wall, and started teaching him the block. 
and the kid was blocking it. I was thinking, man, I think the kid's gonna be mad because my brother like picked him up and pinned him against the wall and was teaching him blocks. The kid loved it. I taught a kid Joey in a wheelchair and couldn't walk, couldn't do anything, couldn't do anything. And I taught him karate by closing his eyes. Because it's a mental thing. And when you can see that and walk away, it's a it's a pattern, patterns you learn. Songs, things you can hear, no matter what, someone can make beats in their head. If you're talented, and then even if you couldn't do move, you can translate that to a guy who can really like make this awesome song. So the mind doesn't stop. So once I saw that, I knew karate, I was I was hooked on it because it gives kids goals. Yellow belt, orange belt, blue belt. I didn't have a lot of belts back then. It took me like four years to get the orange belt, alright? So, but it, but it gives, you get tips on your belt, and you start learning to set goals. How many of us set a goal, and when we get it, we stop? Not me. My mom used to say, you're never going to be satisfied. Because, and I said, I'm not. Because as soon as I reach a goal, you look, and you see your next goal. That's how you grow. You know, if you look in school, and you're like, my goal is to get a high school diploma, and you stop, you're not going further. And it's college, and then it's this, and it's that. So we have to learn to have goals. We have to learn to be disciplined. Really, it's the truth. The secret to success is to always say, I can. You know, there's plenty of times, I'm going through a lot of stuff right now back home. Uh, you know, some, one of my daughter has an injury and it's so easy for me to disconnect and say, I can't come to the show. I'm my own boss, so I'm balancing too. You know what I mean? And uh, to be your own boss and to be disciplined is really hard. That's why you don't need a personal trainer. You don't get a personal trainer, if you get one, maybe you can learn the weights, but eventually stop your personal trainer because it's you that needs to wake up. Your personal trainer can push you and push you and push you. Your personal trainer's not gonna be around forever. That's what my, that's what my karate teacher said. I teach you how to defend yourself. I said, why, I have you. I'll take you to school. Said, you can't take me to school, how come? So I had to learn to defend myself alone. And you start, when you're a baby, you learn to swim, and then they let go of you, and you're, oh, then you learn to swim. So I'm a big believer in reaching a goal, and achieving a goal, and being the best that you can. That's what holds me accountable to be a superhero. You know? Because then, again, yeah, it's like, yeah, go for it. If you, if you have an instinct for applause, you let it loose. Uh, yeah, uh, interesting, because you say, you walk past and you saw from all yeah. Do you, have you ever been drawn to anything else like that? Not really, that's what stinks. I'm not good at other sports. Um, I mean, you know, I scuba dive, I skydive, I got like 1,400 jumps skydiving, I base jump, I do the wind tunnels. But skydiving, I was hooked on. Because you know, in the Power Ranger movie, the White Ranger jumps out of the airplane and the surfboard, and then I got hooked on, I was thinking, I, I want to skydive. So after that, I got my skydiving license. And it's going to sound very strange, but skydiving for me is kind of relaxing. Uh, in the beginning, it's very stressful, and sometimes I still get stressed, but it's relaxing. Everybody's got to find their own. Some people pay, play golf. I can skydive, it clears my mind. And I think one of the reasons is, you don't think of nothing. You don't have a phone, you don't have Instagram, you don't have Facebook. You're skydiving, and you need to live. So you're thinking about, hope my parachute opens. Yes, perfect. So it's like a, it clears my mind out a little bit. But I've never been drawn into other sports, basketball. I, I did, I did leave one time for baseball, and my instructor said this to me: "Are oh, you going to go leave for baseball? Or you're going to quit karate?" And I was like, "I'll be back." And he said, "Jason, I got, I got, I got, I want you to think about this really good." And I said, "Okay." He says, "Would you rather throw a ball or throw people?" I'm going to throw people. Thank you very much. I quit baseball. <laughs> Good job you didn't combine the two and have some sort of weird uh, throwing people at bats. Although I'd watch that yeah, sport. Yeah. I'd watch that sport. Yeah. Um, we will open the floor up very shortly. So if you do have any questions, get them in your mind and I will come to you in a second. We'll just chat a bit longer. Just because, again, like, this is, this is great. Because, um, like we were saying before, with kids being drawn to that sort of... Uh, martial arts and things like that. Is that something you've worked with as well outside of Power Rangers? Do you run studios? Do you just oh yeah, I have uh, I run really good schools called Rising Sun Karate and we have one in New Jersey which my Shimon runs. That's his school uh, affiliated with. 
one in California, right where we filmed Power Rangers. So if you ever go to California, you need to visit my school in Valencia. And Valencia is where we shot everything. You'll drive around and go, Power Rangers, Power Rangers, Power Rangers. We shot everything in Valencia. And then I have two schools in Texas, uh, Atascacita and then one in Paraland. And uh, I have thousands of students around the world. I started an online program called TrainMeJDF.com. And the reason why I started that program is so many people want to train with me, but I can't open schools everywhere. And this is an online program. Remember I told you you need discipline. No one's going to be there and say, wake up and train. I have people turning it on, and they will do the class. Uh, I had a kid I used to teach, Skype. I used to try. I said, I'm going to teach this kid. He really wanted to learn, and I taught him. He, he didn't look too excited, but I, but I taught him four lessons, and it worked. And... Um, but then he had depression and he ended up taking his life. And I didn't know that. And his mom said, hey, he loved karate class. And I was like, I didn't think he did. Because he didn't show no emotions. He was just, so I was thinking, I don't know if this kid likes the class. The mom said it meant everything to this kid. She said he would run down early to stay there 30 minutes before his class started. And I wish I knew then, because I wasn't just teaching karate. I could have taught a lot of motivational things to him, which I did. But I, my approach to karate would have been more of a mental approach for him. So I decided that meant so much for him to take an online class. Why not just start an online class for everyone? And you know what? Even if they train a little, they can still feel part of the club. You know, and that's the idea with the, with uh, karate schools or anything. They feel part of the club. That's the reason why you have all these games. Different games is they want to be part of the club. They want to feel like they fit in. So they joined the wrong side of town. And now they're in games doing what everyone else is doing. So if you want to feel part of the club, Comic Cons, you're part of the club, karate, you know, we need to find acceptance in our life. Where we're, we're accepted. The people that don't think we're accepted, it's not, it's not true. We're accepted everywhere. If you're hanging with those people that don't accept you, then don't be around those people. You don't need to be around them, you know? It's great. I mean, is anyone else right now just feel like right now, I can do anything? Great. Um, before, again, last thing before we jump into the audience, um, like we say, you've been there since Generation 1, and obviously you've seen all the inclinations of official Power Rangers. What do you think about the rise in all the fan fiction and all the fan videos and stuff that come through? Do you, do you get involved in any of that or watch any of that? Well, um, you know, I try to stay Savon approved. Savon tries to look at me as an ambassador for Savon, an ambassador for the brand. Because my Instagram is always PG-13, I don't, you know, I don't do anything inappropriate. If I do, I'm not posting it. I always try to approve things. Bat and Sun was approved. I'm working on a few other projects that Savant approved that the fans are going to be like, oh, I can't tell you what, you're going to be shocked. Um, so everything that I do is, is fan approved. There was a fan film that got a lot of hits. You know, uh, they, they asked, yeah, they asked me uh, if I wanted to do the, the movie. And he said, you know, blood and drugs. And I was like, ah, can't do that because the, these little kids are still watching Power Rangers on TV. They Google Power Rangers and that fan film shows up. I'm sure the guys in the fan film probably hate me. I'm sorry, so it's not nothing against what you all did. The graphics were great, but you don't need to add blood, drugs, getting shot in the head. Those are things that the brand don't need to see right now. And, uh, you know, so all the fan films out there are pretty clean. I think everyone, like these Power Ranger guys in the back, raise your hand, they, you know, uh, they're from Germany, yes, and they're representing Germany. And then you have the Belgium Power Rangers who are representing Power Rangers. You see, we're representing clean stuff. Kids will go up to them and want to take a picture, you know, and uh, that's the good thing is I love clean fan stuff because it keeps the Power Ranger brand alive. And if there's anything I can ever do involved in the Power Ranger brand, I will, and I'm always consistent to the brand, so I'm sure you have this, is not the last time you're gonna see Tom, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And again, yeah, if you've got an applause, let it go. Um, lovely. Right, I am gonna come to the audience now, so if you have a question, just raise your hand, I will try and get to you. Um, so, first one's always, always the pressure. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to come to this man first so he can actually get in there and get down to you just because he's here. Yes sir, what's your question? 